Did you know that the most common chronic disease in childhood is tooth decay, also known as dental caries or cavities? Up to half of children have a cavity in their primary teeth, and more than half of adolescents have had a cavity in their permanent teeth. Tooth decay occurs when the bacteria that naturally live in the mouth create acids that erode the outer layer of the tooth called the enamel, resulting in the formation of holes or cavities in the teeth. The presence of sugars, especially simple carbohydrates in the mouth, is key to forming cavities as the bacteria break down sugar to produce the corrosive acids. Saliva is alkaline, that is the opposite of acidic, and so is able to neutralize this acidity and protect the teeth up to a certain level. However, frequent snacking or consumption of foods with a high sugar content increases the buildup of acids in the mouth, which eventually overpowers the protective effects of saliva. Then the enamel starts to get demineralized and eroded, paving the way for tooth decay. Tooth decay is detrimental to a child's health. The impact varies depending on the severity and how promptly it is treated. Some of the consequences of tooth decay include the following. 1. Pain. As tooth decay progresses, it can lead to pain and sensitivity in the affected tooth, especially when taking hot, cold, sweet, or acidic foods and drinks. Children with damaged teeth may avoid certain foods because of difficulty chewing, which can lead to poor nutrition and potential growth issues if the pain persists. When a child experiences tooth pain, they may be hesitant to brush or floss their teeth because it may worsen the pain, and this inadequate oral hygiene contributes to further dental problems. Other consequences of tooth pain include irritability and restlessness, inadequate sleep, lack of concentration and poor performance in school, and an overall decreased quality of life from not being able to enjoy everyday activities and have a normal pain-free childhood. Number two is infection. Tooth decay can advance deeper into the tooth, getting to the part where nerves and blood vessels are located. The decay can also spread to neighboring teeth, increasing the risk of cavities in other parts of the mouth. If tooth decay stays untreated, the bacterial infection can cause an abscess, which is a collection of pus within the teeth, gums, and surrounding tissues. Infections arising from the teeth can also spread to the neck, the face, and even the brain, resulting in serious health complications, including death. Number three, tooth loss. Cavities can weaken the structure of the tooth, making it more prone to further decay. If a tooth becomes too damaged or infected, it may need to be extracted. Number four is physical appearance. Visible discoloration of the teeth and tooth loss affect the child's looks. Children may become withdrawn from social activities and avoid interactions because of self-consciousness about their teeth. Number five, bad breath. Yeah. Food particles that get trapped in the decayed teeth provide breeding ground for bacteria, which then break down the food and release foul-smelling odors. Bad breath, also known as halitosis, can affect children in many ways, especially socially. Children may feel embarrassed, ashamed, and may be teased or bullied, leading to feelings of isolation and low self-esteem. Number six, dental caries may affect the overall health of the child. Poor oral health, including untreated tooth decay, has been linked to various systemic health issues like cardiovascular disease, diabetes complications, and respiratory infections. While the direct causal links are still being researched, maintaining good oral health is important for overall well-being. Number seven, there are also financial implications of tooth decay. Dental care has one of the highest costs in healthcare, even with insurance coverage. Dental treatments such as fillings, 
root canals, crowns, and tooth extractions are usually required to restore oral health. Treating advanced tooth decay can be more complex and costly compared to early intervention. The good news is that these negative outcomes of tooth decay can be prevented. So let's talk about prevention. The most economical measure to reduce dental caries in children is fluoridation of public water supplies, which has been shown to be safe and effective. However, this is not within the immediate control of parents and caregivers. So what can you do at home to optimize oral hygiene and prevent tooth decay? Here are some important tips. Number one, start early. It is never too early to initiate oral hygiene practices. Begin even before teeth emerge. You can gently wipe your baby's gums with a soft cloth after feeding. As soon as the first tooth appears, start brushing with a small, soft bristle toothbrush and water. Number two, be careful about putting your child to sleep with a bottle or sippy cup in the mouth. Children suck more slowly as they fall asleep and the content of the bottle stays stagnant in their mouth. And so the prolonged exposure to baby formula, milk or juice causes quick and severe decay of the front teeth. You can use a pacifier instead to soothe the child and if you still prefer a bottle, fill it up with plain water instead. Number three, regular brushing of the teeth. Once a child is around two years old, start brushing using a small amount of toothpaste. There's absolutely no need to squish a lot of toothpaste on the brush. Just a pea-sized quantity gets the job done. Until your child is around six to seven years old, it is advisable to supervise their brushing to make sure they are doing it correctly. And that is using gentle circular motion on all sides of each tooth. Also encourage children to brush at least twice a day. Number four, use fluoridated toothpastes. Many toothpastes contain fluoride, which helps maintain the structure of the teeth. Fluoride helps to strengthen the enamel, promote reabsorption of minerals like calcium and phosphate, and prevent the growth of bad bacteria in the mouth. Five, don't forget to floss daily, preferably after each meal. Flossing helps to remove plaque, a sticky film of bacteria that forms on your teeth and can lead to tooth decay and gum disease. Flossing also helps to dislodge food particles stuck between your teeth that brushing alone might miss. Number six, watch the diet. Paying attention to your child's diet is very important since the consumption of sugary drinks and snacks is a big risk factor for tooth decay. Avoid gummy candies and starchy foods that get stuck on or trapped between the teeth. Healthier snack options like fruits, vegetables, and cheese should be offered. A balanced diet rich in whole grains, lean proteins, and dairy products provide protein and calcium needed for strong teeth. Choose water as the main beverage rather than juice or soda. Number seven, dental checkups. Schedule regular dental visits starting around the first birthday. Dentists do a fantastic job of monitoring oral health and catching any issues early. A dentist who specializes in pediatric care can provide additional guidance tailored to your child's needs. For instance, they can provide fluoride treatments and supplements, and they can apply dental sealants, which are thin coatings put on the chewing surfaces of the back teeth to prevent food and bacteria from getting trapped in the grooves. Number eight, lead by example. Children often learn from their parents, so make oral hygiene a family affair. Brush and floss together to demonstrate good habits. Remember, early intervention and prevention are fundamental to maintaining healthy teeth and gums. 
regular oral hygiene practices, and healthy habits from a young age lay the foundation for good oral health throughout a child's life. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have learned something from this video. If so, please go ahead and subscribe, like the video, share with your friends, and leave a feedback in the comments section. Bye for now.